God, praise God. You may be seated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Glory to God. How many know that God has a plan for today? He doesn't just have a plan for every man and every woman. He has a plan for every meeting. Do you believe that? Then we ought to become, come here excited about his plan. And so far that plan was to encourage us to trust him and have faith in him. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, what I'm about to share with you, uh, I think you were born to hear this. I believe your spirit, um, it, it's something that God orchestrated and put together, N- not me, zero me. God placed all of this and put all these things together, and man, what a timing to hear this. My people perish for lack of knowledge, right? But boy, you're going to get some knowledge that is just going to turn a light on, I believe, if you receive. If you pull today, do you realize that rain doesn't fall, it's pulled by gravity? Do you understand that? uh, And a lot of times, it's the same way spiritually. For his latter rain, we need to learn how to pull it down. And instead of coming into the house of God and expecting it to fall on us. You just come into the house of God expecting God to change you. No, there needs to be pulling. And God has blessed me to to be on the level of all the levels in in sports and baseball that I've been in those locker rooms as a coach and and as a player. And champions know how to pull. My mom is a champion puller. Uh, If you know Billy Brim, you might just Google it and you'll find out who she is. But... um, if you come in pulling with that attitude, you will, your life will change. Now, what I'm about to tell you, my daughter is 24, and she's a producer for Fox News in Colorado Springs. She was before that a producer for NBC in uh, uh, Springfield, Missouri. And her show, her morning show, God's blessing her. She's anointed. It's number one. And there is Denver pulling from her. There's all these different places and, and big affiliates pulling from her. Well, here's this Christian girl right? And she's in the middle of the media. Now, and not only that, she's in Colorado. Just put it together. She's around some strange things. And there's, and there's a lot of non-Christians, and if they are, they're real liberal. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, you know, just, so she, she, she tries, and she, she's following God on how to be that light and to, to talk into their lives and, and things. And, uh, Oh, they just laugh at her and make fun of the Bible and how, why would God, why would God have that child die? And why would God have that, this happen? And why would, so things that, you know, they're just taking and running with it. And so uh, Taylor, my daughter, who heard this, she went and, and she goes, Dad, I can't wait to go tell them. So they go to their next deal where they're all at the coffee shop. She begins to tell it, anointing hits the place, and every one of those people said, That's the first thing we've ever heard that we've ever heard. Now, take it from their perspective, right, their shoes, that we've ever heard that made any sense. That finally makes sense. And and, and the anointing was there, and it was just awesome. Another thing that happened was uh, I got a text from a number that was, you know, not in my context and and, uh, contacts, and, and it says, hey, Chip, this is Brother Copeland. Can I call you? Now, to know Brother Copeland's one thing, to have his phone number is a whole nother deal. That's a really small group. And uh, I was like, what? Having people take pictures, you know. He said, Chip, I got to call you. I just heard you preach this on television, and I've ordered six copies of the thing, and, and this was particularly what he he said, it changed my life. I said, how can that be? You've changed my life. Everything I got's from you almost. He said, no, you hit some things. So it wasn't me, it's was God. So what is it about? So I'm going to catch you up if you weren't here yesterday for that leadership meal, which was amazing. It was great. It, it encouraged me. I called our church at home and said, man, you ought to see what's going on. And uh, so I've got all these ideas, and, and I want to use them from what you guys are doing. But um, 
I'm going to catch up. The Lord, I was focusing on authority because mom and I were doing authority conferences all over. And, and he wanted me to dial it in, which means to focus in more because there's something beyond this that he wants me to see that will really help me know this better. And like, like if you had a scope on a rifle or binoculars and you're dialing in. Does everybody understand what I'm talking? I need your heads to do something. You're going along. Okay. That's just the coach in me. I need to know. Instead of, I, I don't know if that, <laughs> I'm assuming they're not getting anything. But So I'm here on authority. He said, dial it in. So I began to do that and I, and, and I caught it in the spirit and it was about the blood. There would not be any authority if there was no bloodshed. He said, now I want you to dial it in some more. And then it was covenant. Every covenant, there's blood shed. So he wanted me to really focus in on covenant. And to the ones that were here yesterday or last night or whatever it was, how many are more covenant-minded now? Amen? Yeah. yeah, we are. Raise your hand. Yeah, I'm more covenant-minded. Absolutely. Covenant's on my mind all the time. It is God's. It is Jesus's. And so... Um, so we talked about covenant and the importance of being covenant-minded. David was covenant-minded. What did he say? This uncircumcised Philistine. All of Israel knew their covenant, but they'd forgotten it. Are you with me? They'd forgotten it. They practiced covenant. They knew they were in covenant, but they had forgotten it. Has the church forgotten it? Come on. We all have, right? Oh, we've been there, but we need to re a refreshing in this. To be more covenant minded. So, Abraham was covenant minded. Abram wasn't, but Abraham was. All right? So, I'm at covenant and I'm preaching it and all of this, and the Lord's showing this to me, and He says, dial it in again. Now, here is where it gets, whoo, I was so glad He showed us this. He said, dial it in. And when we went to dial it in that next time, I'm going, God, where are we going with this? I don't even know. How can you dial it in any further than covenant? He said to me, you're going to, you're going to teach this to people who are going to say, well, God's not back in his covenant for me. I'm born again. He's not beating down my adversaries. I'm not seeing that he's faithful and, I, and all of this stuff. But here I am. I'm in covenant with him. But I'm not seeing my prayers answered. And he says, so you have got to explain this. So dial it in. What was the covenant all about? And the, th the thing that you dial it in one more step than covenant is legal. Everybody say legal. The legal systems of God. God is legal. And I am so glad he is. Aren't you? I, otherwise, it would be chaos. I'm so glad. That's what the people and the liberals and the, the non-Christians, they don't understand. Why did God do this? And why did God let that happen? And why God? No, everything's legal. Everything's legal. He's a just God. He's not only God. He's not only Father. He's judge. And he's not a condemning judge. Amen. He's a just judge. A justifying judge. So how did this all happen? Mom and I were invited to Sid Roth. We were to be on It's Supernatural. Y'all ever seen that, that show? It goes out to 7.2 million people. So we're up there, and we're on the Sid Roth show, and we're teaching about authority. And this man was there, and this man just had an experience, and some of you probably already know who he is, and uh, Robert Henderson's his name, and I encourage you to look him up. Go on Sid Roth and look up his testimony. His name's Robert Henderson. And he had just had this experience that he shares. And after we had shared about authority and what Robert had, had shared about what happened to him, Sid Roth goes, my goodness, this is, what, this is the most powerful message that the church could hear at this particular time. Sid Roth said that on television, 7.2 million people. Brother Colton calls up and said, my God, I mean, you're, you're having generals say this. I awake, I awakening thing. So what is it? So Robert Henderson has this, he's a pastor of a wonderful church and this, and this community and, and just like this, you know, and everybody loves each other. And, and they, they even interviewed people about Pastor Henderson. Oh, man of love, did everything by the book. He is a man of God. 
and everything's going good, and his family was all involved in the ministry, and all of a sudden, his um, son, who was married and a part of the church, an attack comes on his son, all right? And, uh, you know, it just got worse and worse, and they did what they knew to do, and they trusted and stood and did all of this stuff, and continued on, and it got worse. A year goes by. Now two years goes by. Now it's getting past two years, and his son has left the ministry. He's gotten divorced. The family is split. He's running from God, and now he's talking suicide. Now he's talk depression has come in, and it is totally just wham. Now, here's this dad. Here's this pastor. Here's this family that has been doing all this great stuff, and all of a sudden the enemy comes in, and then it's two years later and they hadn't heard anything. Now, time out, and don't judge me on this because God knows my heart. But if that's the type of God that we serve, I don't want any part of it. You've got to wait two years? What kind of God is that? That's not the God I serve. I have found in the scriptures, scriptures where he said, speedily he will avenge you. So it's getting worse Maybe it's getting worse. Jesus even said, we talked about that last night, 18 years, it was her choice. 18 years, she'd been bowed over, bowed over. So anyway, um, so he says that this happened, and he was taken. Now, this is the dad going back. The son's gone. They don't know where he's at, and we're, they're hearing these things, and it's too, and they're doing everything they know to do. He was taken from his body, out of his body. In a vision. He said, we went to the heavenly courtrooms. He said, I'm in a courtroom. He said, I don't know how to tell you anything else, but it was a courtroom. Everything about it was legal. Everything about it was right, justice, everything. It was all. And then God began to speak to him. He said, my people know me as Lord. They know me as Savior. They know me as Father, but they don't know me as Judge. And I remember talking to Brother Colton about this, and he said, yeah, and they don't want to know him as judge either. That's what he said. But we should want to know him as judge. Now, see, we have the picture of judge down here as the judge going, I don't want to see you back in my courtroom. And you don't want to be in that courtroom. But that's not the way it is there. Are you with me? God is just. Bring, he says, to my remembrance so that you can be justified. By your words, you're justified. By your words, you're condemned. Everything is legal. He says, I am judge, but I am the just judge. I'm on your side. He's like, come on, let me justify you. But it's got to be done legally. Are y'all with me now? Okay, so he goes in there, and here, first of all, here's what the Lord showed him about this. He said, there is an adversary, an accuser of the brethren, who comes morning and night. Now, whether he comes in that courtroom or, or he doesn't, it doesn't matter. All we know is that he is accuser of the brethren, right? And he comes to the Father morning and night after us. Now, why is he coming? God explains it to him. And so here's this accuser, this adversary. Do you know what adversary means? The Greek, it is two Greek words, and it's anti-dekos, which means dekos, which means against one's rights. In other words, the definition of adversary is one who brings lawsuit against another. That's the definition of adversary. The adversary, the devil. He's called that many times. The adversary, the devil. What's that mean? He's coming to bring lawsuit against you, legally. He can't do it illegally. He's got he's to have rights to do it, all right? So he comes morning and night. Now, let's look at 1 Peter 5, 8. Let's look at that up on the scriptures, if you don't mind, and just quickly to get going here. Can you all get that up there? If not, we'll just do it the old-fashioned way. Well, I say old-fashioned way, and I'm on my iPad. So 1 Peter 5, 8, tell me when it's up here. 1 Peter, is it up there? Okay. Uh, I need it in King James, if you don't mind. I don't need it, but that might take some time, too. All right. 
5, 8. You got it? Be sober, be vigilant, because you're who? Now, whoa, 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 what did we just learn about adversary? One who brings lawsuit against you. So everything you're seeing is a legal term. One who brings lawsuit against you is as a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he... Say it again. May. In other words, he can't, everyone, because legally he can't. But some he can because they don't have the knowledge of it. But some he can. Is he legally getting it away with it with you? So how do we stop him? What do we do? So here's what the Lord God said to this man about your son. Now here's what I want you to do. And he, uh, uh, he said, well, first of all, he said, this is what Satan, the adversary, is after to stop your son. Now here's the reason. Now get this because you're involved in this. And he showed him a book, and it wasn't the book of life. There are many books in heaven. If you read the Bible, it's a good book. It'll really bless you. There's many books it talks about in heaven. And there is a book in there that it talks about in Psalms 139. And it's about a book of your destinies that was written before anything was even created. And God in Genesis showed it to Adam about all the descendants. Your destiny, God's plan, your name is in the... Come on, sir. Golly, is in a book. And if God put it there, you think it's got bad stuff in there? But that's what the enemy's after. To stop that plan. To stop that destiny. And he comes morning and night, but he has to have legal access given from you. By your words, you're condemned. By your words, you're justified. God says, bring to my remembrance. Declare and decree so that you can be justified. Woo! I'm telling you what, this will, this will put a smile on your face now. This ain't a condemning message whatsoever. This is a you get to go to court message. <laughs> it's the truth. Before you leave here today, before this thing's over, you're going to go, I'm going to court. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to my judge. I'm getting back this. I'm getting my family back. Woo, glory to God. I'm going to do it legally too. Amen. And the judge is going to back me up on this thing. Amen. You, should don't, you don't need to be going in there kicking rocks going, oh, judge. Can you even imagine if a lawyer did that in the court? Emotion has nothing to do with it, a legal thing. Any emotion you put to it, like repentance, I was preaching this, and Rick Renner was with me. Rick said, there is no, in, in the word repentance, he said, there is no emotional tie to that word. It's a legal term. He said, Chip, it's a legal word. It, it's something you get to do. You don't have to do it. Listen to me. You don't have to. You get to. See that? See that? You don't have to. The covenant, when you make covenant with God, boom, it was settled right then and there. Paid for on the cross. That's right. And your name's written in heaven. But you get to. He said, there's no emotional time. Could you imagine if a lawyer went up to a judge and he goes, may I approach the bench, please, sir? Your Honor. Come on. And he goes up there and <laughs> I haven't won a case in years. My dog's dead. My daughter just got in college and I got a lot of bills. <laughs> Does that have any effect on the thing? Absolutely not. So any emotion tied to it is your choice. It ain't going to affect it, but are y'all with me or not? He said, there's a book, and he showed him that book. And he said, your son's destiny is written in there. And so is yours. And he says, now, he said, God, where is that scripture? And he said, Psalm 139, 16. So let's put that up there if you don't mind. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book, all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as that yet there was none of them. All right? Now, I want to read to you. Well, let me first go here. 
I told the people this last night. When you're Billy's boy, you get books for Christmas. If you know Billy Brim at all. And uh, she gave us a set of books that made from the Art Scrolls Company that all the scriptures of the Torah are written, but then underneath it are commentaries from rabbis of, of, of when it was written, that day, those days of when it was written, and explaining things. They know about this book. The Jews know about their destinies with God. They know it. I'm in covenant with some. I've got some dear friends when we go over there and do our tours and stuff. And they said, are you kidding me? We all know. And if you don't think we believe it, how about this number? They love giving this stat. They go, do you realize how many Jews there are in the world today? In the whole world, the number. The number of Jews in the whole world is 0.001%. That's the number of Jews in the world. When you put the whole world together. That's the percentages they make. Not even a half a percent. But yet they've won 33% of the Nobel Prizes. Think on that. Almost half of the Nobel Prizes the Jewish people have won. Why? Because they're doing their destiny and their calling and they believe in it and God's involved and they're involved. Amen. So what happens when you get involved in this and you find out about this thing and you start legally taking care of business? Amen. Right back on track. Here we go. So I go in this book, which is the Telahim, which that's the Hebrew word for Psalms. I go to Psalm 139, 16. Oh, okay, you put that one up there. That was a good one. I'm glad you showed me that. <laughs> and here is what they said about it. Y'all ready to hear? This was written back when it was written. To God, everything is apparent it's, as it is stated in a finished book. In Psalm 139. He, now, now they're going to refer to Genesis 5.1. This is the account of the descendants. They're going to give you an example of this. This is the account of the descendants of Adam. While Adam was still in unshaped form, the creator showed him all the generations of his descendants. Every generation and its leaders, every generation and its scholars, every generation and its preachers. In addition, God revealed to Adam the number of their years, their days, their hours. He even counted out before Adam the number of steps every man is destined to take. Whoo! Son! Are you kidding me? He counted out every hour to every man, and he showed it to Adam. He showed him yours. He showed him everyone. He showed him this church, current church. He showed the plan for it. But there is an adversary, and there is an accuser, and he's coming to stop this destiny. And then he said this. They, they said this. This is the, the your, your destiny is written in a book already. The Almighty, the architect of creation, wrote this book. This is the blueprint which records the divine master plan for mankind. They said God is omniscient. He knows everything. He knows the future better than you know the past. He foresees and knows everything about man, yet man himself has no inkling of his own future, which remains a mystery to him or her. But even more wondrous is the divine paradox. Everything is foreseen by God, yet man has the freedom of choice. When he created man, did he give him choice? He said choose, didn't he? Even angels had a choice. Lucifer had a choice. And some of the angels had chose to go with him and some chose to stay. And then he, he creates man. What does he say? Choose life. Not, or death, not death. Choose blessings, not curses. Here we are praying to God and we're doing all this and cursings are happening. There's a choice involved. Then it says this. It is man, the sinner, who allows darkness and gloom into his life legally. Yet God endowed him with the power of repentance, which he can rekindle the light which he obscured or extinguished in his soul. He has empowered, he's endowed man with the empower of repentance. Now, watch this. You need to get this book if you don't have it. This is a must read. Richard Sigmund, My Time in Heaven, 
He preached back in the A.A. D- Allen days. He had a car wreck, and he was dead for eight hours. Eight hours. He was on the embalming table in the embalming room, and that's when he came back. And they all said the dead man, they, it talks about all that. The dead man, the hospital, they have uh, all the documents of it. The dead man's alive, and he said, I'm not dead. And he began to tell them what he saw in heaven. And the whole hospital, the doctors started weeping and repenting and different things like that. And so he has endowed us. Now, let me go to this one first of all. This is one of the places that he was taken to. I was taken to a very large building that had a huge archway. Inside were rows upon rows of shelves with books. These shelves seemed to be miles long and miles high, and the books looked about 15 feet tall. The books did. There were hundreds of angels servicing these books. They were going in and out. There was so much activity in this room. The archives of heaven. God keeps and records, and this large building was the archives of heaven. Revelations 20, 12 says, I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in these books. Everything is recorded. Are y'all getting me? Listen. Everything is recorded. The archives of heavens contains the different books about our lives, and these are the books that are taken to God when judgment comes. These books are taken to God when judgment comes. Cricket, cricket. These books are the records of our works here on earth. If a person sins, it is recorded in this book. Good thing I don't stop there. That would be tough. I would join you. I was given the understanding. That when we repent, anything that we had done that was wrong or sinful in nature and was recorded in the books is erased for eternity. No one can find the record, not even God. Thank you, Lord. We we don't have to. We get to. Amen. That's like anything. If you're born again, you don't have to walk in love. You get to. Amen. You don't have to give. You get to and receive the benefits of it. You don't have to live in faith. You don't have to trust God. You get to. Amen. Now, I want to read this because this is about that book. He saw the book as well. And now we went, Mom did a whole book and study on people who went to heaven, including that little boy who they made, you know, the movie about. Interviewed him, did all that. They saw the book. Every one of them talk about this book. What book? The book of destiny. It's on a pulpit. It's there. Your name's in it. And it's good. And Satan's trying to stop it. Don't let him. Remember the Bible. Give no place to the devil. Legally, don't give him place. You mean I can leave it legally not? Yes. You can stop him. And fulfill the destiny has God. Well, it's too late. No. No, it's not too late. Are you kidding me? The Lord showed me one time. Everywhere I travel, uh, except for here because I just drove over here. But usually I fly in. I'll get a rental car and I'll get, you know, either on my phone or a GPS. And when I go to big cities, it's different. You know, there's some places like western Oklahoma or Kansas. It's one line for hours. And you're wondering if it's broke. But the numbers are moving. You know what I'm talking about? There's not even any little lines going across us. Hours. But then you get into Houston and New York and L.A. And you can't even tell where the thing is. It's, there's so many lines of roads. I was in Houston one time trying to get to my hotel. And I could see it. But I, I could see it. It took me 45 minutes when I got near it to get in it. Man, I'm frustrated. God, because they'd have five exits at one deal. And, uh, but the lady, the lady on the the box didn't lose it. (laughs) 
she'd just go recalculating. She could have went again. She could have developed an attitude. I bet they start making those. And then they just shut off after three. It's enough. Idiot mode. You had your chance. No! Thank God. And so finally, finally I hit the right one. Finally, 45 minutes, along with traffic and everything else. And, and I get there, and she said, you have reached your destination. Huh. And the Lord began to speak to me. He said, don't you think if a little box can finally get you on your, to your destination and recalculate you and not lose interest, not leave you, don't you think I, who created you, and who knows your destiny? Amen. He's just recalculating. Amen. But he's going to get you there. Do you believe that? He's going to get you there. But meanwhile, there's somebody trying to stop that. And here's what we got to know. Amen. And so, here's what he said about that. He said, on a beautiful pulpit-like structure was a book that looked like a Bible. It was signed across the front with these words, my covenant I will not break. I will not alter the thing that has gone out of my mouth. I was astonished and reminded of the shed blood and the, Lord, uh, and the price that he paid for me to redeem me. The book opened by itself. This is not the one I told you about on Sid Roth, Robert Henry. Totally different. The book opened by itself, and then suddenly Jesus was there by my side, and he said, in this book is my plan for your life, and I will honor it as long as you honor it and live under my Father's demand for your life. I fell at his feet. Holy is the Lord my God. I never knew the power of covenant in that realm before, and I will never forget it again. It shall stand for eternity. There were other rooms, one for each born-again believer. You see, God has plans for each one of us, eternal plans. Now, now that you know about this book, it's there. Now that you know there's an adversary who's trying to stop, and your name's in that book, here's what he told him to do. Now, however you want to do this, this is fine, however you see it, but it's all scriptural, declaring and decreeing. He says, here's what I want you to do. And he says, I want you to, to repent for your son. He said, now, he, you know, he's sitting there thinking, repent for him? Wait a minute. He said, like an intercessor, he said, he's not able to do it in, in the the stage he's in, but I want you to bring him and repent for him. He didn't even think he could do that. Okay, I'll do that. So he does it. And he says, and he, he says, repent for him. And so he did. I repent, Lord, for him. No emotional thing to it. It was the legal. And here's what the Lord told him. He says, when you repent, it puts a gag order on the adversary. <laughs> now you've shot him. Now he's out of the case. Now he has nothing to stand on. Oh, you don't have to. You get to. Amen. You can stop him immediately. God, I repent. Woo! Now let's get down to business. Amen. I'm repenting all the time. I said that in church one time, and I thought, what are the new people thinking? <laughs> what I meant was, let me give you an example of what a pastor could do. Oh, you know, every summer the... The, the, the people go on break or they don't give during this time or they don't do, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not going to let him use those words. I'm not going to let him take those words and use them against us. I repent of that. I'm not down on my knees crying and how bad I You understand what I'm talking about? That's why there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Satan wants you to be in condemnation. No. He's afraid of those people who know their rights. Who know their legal rights. Man, he can't, he can't devour them. And so he said, so he repented for him. He said, now I want you to, uh, I want you to repent. And he said, okay, why? And he, the Lord showed him, well, let me tell you what the accuser's using on you. Okay, yes, sir. And he showed him a couple days back at breakfast, him and his wife, the, the, the pastor, the mom and dad of the boy, of the man, they had a conversation. He's watching this like on a video stream. Because this is what the adversary used on him. I wonder what he's using on you or me. 
but this is what he had right to. And the dad said this, not trying to be backslid, just with good intention, but there was a legal thing in there. He said, let's say the, the boy's name's John. How come, honey, John doesn't do this? How come he won't do this? He knows better. He, he doesn't, and he won't, and he can't, and he, how come he doesn't? Let's pray for him that he, well, legally, access-wise, they gave the accuser and the adversary, and here's what the adversary said to the, to, to the judge about that. He said, look, even the father says he can't. Even the father says he can't. Oh, my God. Well, you know what we get to do right now? Every, just, just, y'all just talk amongst yourselves. I'll just do it myself, man. Every word I've ever said about my son or daughter that did not glorify you, I repent of that in the name of Jesus. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. Every word that was said about me, I repent for them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Man, that's a good thing to do. And so he repented, and then he said, Now I want you to, to declare and decree his destiny. Don't start talking about what he can't and cannot do and won't do. Declare and decree. Doesn't the Bible say, put me, can you put that scripture back on you had a while ago? Put me in remembrance. Why? Why? Because God has a short term memory? No. No, it's the legal thing to do. Put what into his remembrance? My word. My covenant. Put me in remembrance and then declare thou that, they, that you may be justified. And he said, now declare and decree your boy's destiny, which I had already written out. He said, yes, sir. Praise God. He will serve the Lord. He will. I mean, he began. Now you're saying the right things. That's trust in God. That's, that's faith right there. Declaring and decreeing those things that are written in that book. You believe it or not? We're going to see it one day. Amen. And he said, now, use your authority. Take care of that assigned spirit that came against him on depression. And he did. He said it wasn't 10, 15 minutes that did this. He said he gets a phone call. And his son goes, Dad. I'm totally set free. Dad, I'm coming home. So they show the rest of the story, and the son's back in the ministry. The family's back. To, all, I mean, and the church is just, just booming. And now he's got his own church, and it's just boom. All of these things are happening in their lives. And the Lord said, what you tried to take care of on the battlefields for two years, you took care of in the courtrooms in 15 minutes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, you know, when you repent, that's God's way of doing things. Now, think about this, people. Just th here's just a couple things to chew on, and then I'll wrap it up, okay? A couple things to chew on. Jesus got baptized by John the Baptist in the waters of repentance. He didn't sin. Are y'all, come on with this repenting thing and say, come on, hold it. It's a legal thing to do. He didn't sin. And John the Baptist couldn't understand it. And finally he's like, John, just do it. Uh, paraphrase it. Why? He didn't sin. It was the legal thing to do. Jesus on the cross. Forgive them, Lord. Right? He repented for them. Oh, shit. Give me Mark. Give me Mark 1125 Amplified. Don't put it up until I tell you. How many want this legally? Do you believe the Bible and you can have what it's... 
You say, you, you believe it? Do you really? Well, how come I've been preached to for years that if you speak to this mountain and you believe it in your heart, you shall have whatever you say. I'm going to tell you right now, there's many, many years I spoke and believed. Didn't see. Well, there's a legal contract with it. You can't stop right there. You can't have Mark 11, 23, and 24 without 25. That's the fine print. That's the legal part of moving the mountain. You got a mountain that needs to be moved? You want to speak to it and get rid of it? Okay, let's do it legally. Let's look at 25. What's the very first word in 25? Can y'all see it? And. And. That means I'm not done. Don't leave yet. Keep reading. Right? And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, let it drop, let it go in order. Order! Are y'all getting this? Order! There's an order to it. There's a legal system to it. God is legal. He's just. He is not going to be unjust. And I'm glad he's not. I'm glad he's not that way. I'm glad he's not fickle. I'm glad he's not, well, I'm going to answer his prayer, but not her prayer, because he paid attention to church more than she did. She passed notes. I ain't go, what? What? No, God's legal, and there is a legal way of doing things. Amen? And we can figure out how legally to access what's ours. Now, if you begin to know God as judge, then I want you to start, if you want to grow into this thing, I want you to start... Um, how did Brother Colton put that? He said, translate and meditate. Translate the word judge where God is. Now think about this. God resists pride. Proud pride. Right? Resist. It's actually a real aggressive term. Put judge in there. Judge resists pride. What's that mean? Not my courtroom. Not my presence. And here we are full of pride, trying to access God in that covenant. What is pride? Your way. But he, but he comes back and he says this, but I will exalt the humble. He says, come clothed in humility. Whoo! Now he just gave us legal access. To who? Your honor. You're honoring God. By coming in humility. So I had an opportunity to ask Brother Copel. I asked Mom. I asked Keith Moore. And they all gave me the same answer. What is humility? Because the Bible says before honor comes humility. And he says, come clothed to me. Come to me in humility. And I asked them. They all gave me the same answer. And here it was. If you want to know what true humility is, it is submitting your will to the to God and his word, no matter what. Y'all get that? Submitting your will, your chooser, to God and his ways and his word and whatever he says, no matter what. That's true humility. But when you're trying to put in your way, that's not humility. So you can be in pride and, and all of this stuff. Now, glory to God. Here's a good thing to know. It may not be serious. What, where were we on, on that right now? Was I reading something and I stopped right in the middle of it? Yeah, and when, in, in order. In order that your Father who is in heaven may also forgive you of your own failings and shortcomings. Praise God. God's way and legal way of doing things. It may not be serious to you about what words you use, but the devil doesn't care, the adversary doesn't. So if you didn't get anything, get this. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. Amen? Now, all right, here we go. And we're going to wrap it up right here. Legally wise. Are you ready for this? Get ready. Now, some of you is just... It's just going through one ear and one out the other, and you'll go, hey, good word, and go out to eat and have your day, and then go the rest 
and, and there's going to be that day where it comes. Did you fulfill that destiny? Some of you are going to grab this thing and put it to practice. Happens every time. And we hear the testimonies of them. And I'm going to ask you, and you're going to think, well, that's one of the dumbest questions I've ever heard asked. But I'm going to ask it to you anyway. How many would rather receive from God sooner or later? Is there anybody that chooses later? But here's the funny thing about it. People are choosing later. They make fun of that answer, but they're choosing later. Now, here's the whole, this legal system is the difference between getting sooner or later. Now, if you chose later, then here is your poster child. Your example is Job. You ever heard about Job? Okay, so let's read about Job. This legal system answers the Job question. If anybody ever had a question about Job, watch this thing legally now. So let's go to Job 1, verse 10 in the Amplified. All right? Job 1, 10 in the Amplified. Everybody look up here. Have you not? Now remember, what did Jesus call Satan? The father of lies. He said there is no truth in him. So don't believe a word he says. So he's speaking here, so I ain't believing any of this. Have you not put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have confirmed prosperity and happiness upon him and the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. Click. But put forth your hand now and touch all that he has and he will curse you to your face. This is all lies. There's no truth in it whatsoever. God's not going to go down there and curse him. God's not going to allow him to do it. Choices were made. Watch this. Click. And the Lord said to who? Keep reading. The adversary and the accuser. Now we just got legal here. This whole thing is a courtroom deal. Don't you remember when Jesus said to Peter, Satan has come to sift you as wheat. But I prayed for you. Amen. Behold, all that he has is in your power. He wasn't giving him the authority. You had the power. Man fell. You got the power. But Jesus came back and gave us the authority back to us. But right now you have that authority. If he didn't have any power, how could Satan say to Jesus, bow down before me, worship me, and I'll give you all that you see. Now, Behold, all that he has is in your power, only upon this man himself put not forth your hand. So in other words, you can't kill him. But you already had it, legally. But So Job could have been one page long. It could have been one page long. Ugh. Have y'all read Job? Ugh. And a lot of people are thinking, God allowed that. Legal. No, you have that over. You have that down there. He's trusting Job. And Job goes from day to day, week to week, month to month, verse to verse, chapter to chapter. It's getting worse and worse and worse and worse and wah, Affleck! <laughs> and I'm not talking about supplemental insurance. It gets so bad that God comes down and gives him, I call a big boy speech. Have y'all read that? The only good thing about all that, whining and complaining or this and that and just saying this, is that we learned a lot about eternity through this speech that God gives about heaven. We, we learned a lot about creation, I should say. And he comes down and says, who, where were you when I created, you weren't there when I created, it. oh my God, here it came. Now, did God after that speech just go, now, I'm going to straighten it all up, you suffered enough. No, he had to legally do something for God to access and back his covenant for him. What did Job do after that speech? I repent. Amen. Woo! You just put a gag order on the adversary and you just stopped the devil 
from, from, you just stopped empowering the devil over your life and started empowering God over your life. Amen. Amen. And then God was legally access. He could do it now and back his covenant. Amen. Glory to God. Now let's look at sooner and we'll be done. Anybody want to choose sooner? Okay, let's go to Luke. Um, I think it's Luke. All of a sudden, I've, hold on. Did I give you Luke? Yeah, there it is. All right. Now, here's a parable. How many believe that to Jesus, words were important? Do you think they were important? They had a purpose. He only said what his father told him to say, right? So this is a parable, meaning that this means something parable to it. And he spoke a parable unto to them. That men always ought to pray and not faint. Click. Watch this now, everybody. Saying there was in a city a judge. Now he's going to talk about a judge, so we're talking about a parable. Are you with me? There's another judge. But this judge is none, he's not just, and he's not good. But there is a judge who's good. Are are y'all getting this now? And this judge feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my who? Do you see how adversary is very legal now? The word adversary is very legal. God is very legal. Do you have access to this courtroom? Get rid of any pride. Repent of it. You have access. Lord, I trust you. That's humility right there. Amen? All right. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said to himself, Though I fear... Not God, nor regard man, click, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her because she's wearing me out. I'm just giving you my, right? She's wearing me out. She won't stop. She's persistent. I keep telling her, don't come back to my courtroom. She keeps coming back. I said, you're not coming tomorrow. Yeah, I am. You want me to stop by and get you a falafel? (laughs) They got good ones down the back corner. No, you're not. Here she is. Persistent faith. Persistent faith. Going, and I'm getting avenged of my adversary. I am getting justified legally. And he ends up doing it. What does Jesus say? Watch this. God showed me something about this. Watch this. Click. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. Watch this. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him? Watch this. Though he bear long. Can you imagine Jesus preaching this? You think God makes you bear long? You think God makes you wait? You think it takes God a long time? Well, just keep holding on. Keep, keep. You think God is, Jesus is the one saying this. You really think our father is that way? What kind of faith is that? Get avenged. Get justified. Watch what he says next. I tell you that he will avenge them. Oh, come on, somebody. I will avenge them speedily. Amen. And then he goes on to say, nevertheless, for the Son of Man, what kind of faith is he going to find? Is he going to find this poor me, Job, faith? Or is he going to find this? One who knows their rights, persistent faith, amen, knows how to go before the presence of God. And I'm going to tell you something. When I got a hold of this and learned all of this, I couldn't wait to go to court. And now you're going to think, well, I, yeah, I'm going to go to court for my children. My men, I'm going to go to court for anything. And I walked outside, and I looked out in the backyard, and we have a pool in our backyard. And we had this kind of uh, redneck cover is what I call it. We had a, you go down to Lowe's and, you know, winterize it. You buy a tarp instead of putting one of those really nice ones on. And you hold it down with a cinder blocks on one end and a transmission on the other. And <laughs> not really, but <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Swing set, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so Brother Copeland or Keith Moore, somebody that would come over. You know, we didn't really want them looking back there. <laughs> hey, what do you got? No, no, it's okay. So Candy and I go, 
Well, we're faith people. I mean, we've God's blessed us and this house and everything else. Now, let's just believe. So we did, and so we called a guy who we knew and ordered it. And this thing was fancy, man. Mm. I mean, fancy. You could have bought a nice used car with this. So we ordered it, and and I I, I, was, I wasn't even thinking about going to court for this guy, but the Lord told me to do it. And uh, so this guy. We call him and he doesn't, and then all of a sudden, after a year later, his his number's been disconnected. So we called the place where he worked and blah. Oh, he's gone and he's stolen this and that, and you know the laws that blah blah blah. Uh, you just lost all that money. You know how you get punched in the gut, kind of. And uh, sorry, two years, two and a half years, still we have the. The tarp and during the winter in Oklahoma, the wind comes roaring down the plane or whatever the song says. Some lucky neighbor got our tarp. <laughs> Just the way it, that's what we do. But now we had all this, money sunk into it. Lord said to me, bring him to me. You know what most people do? Talk about it. They'll even talk about it in a faithy way. But Mark eleven twenty five 25 says, if you, for, if you have anything against anyone, and I said, Lord, I don't even know if this is legal, but I'm coming to you. This is the first one I did. I'm coming to you, and I repent for him, and I said his name. I repent for him. I don't know if he knows or ever had a mama like I did or a grandma like I did praying for me. He may not have, but I'm coming for him. I'm standing for Can you imagine God in heaven going, that's what I'm talking about. Loving each other, forgiving each other, repenting for each other. Man, that's legal. You stop in a gag order on that adversary. And I said, God, I repent for every word I said, everything I thought, anything, Lord. I, Lord, I said, his name's written in that book. You sent your son to die for him. God, you love him just as much as you love me. He ripped me off of thousands of dollars. But God loves him just as much as he loves me. And I declare and decree his destiny to come forth. And I bind you a signed spirit that came against him. In the name of Jesus, glory to God, court dismissed. <laughs> Woo! You ought to be wanting to go to court right now. Amen. Do you feel that way? Yeah. Absolutely. You get to. He's like this. Come on. Come on. That's the judge we serve. I'm not a condemning. I'm a justifying. Yeah, I know, but I did that. Just repent. That's a legal thing. Now, come, 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 come. You see? It's not get on your knees for two hours. You don't feel bad enough. No, it's not enough crying. No. Study it out in Greek Hebrew. There's no emotion tied to it. It's a legal thing you get to do to gain access to the throne. Amen. I see some smiles on some faces now. And the next day, the next day, you can ask Nate this. It's a miracle if I answer the phone and your face is on it. Listen, your face is on it, the contact, and you're even doing a picture like this. Please answer the I have friends who have done that to me. They got on my phone because I won't answer. It's terrible. I'm working on it. And they've taken pictures. And it's an, it's a, it's an unknown number. And it's like my finger is going. And I'm like, no, no. No. No, Hello. Chip, this is, and it was the pool guy, the next day. Promise in front of God and everybody. This is the words he said. You have every right to take me to court. I held the phone. I go, I've already taken him to court. He said, I've done this. My wife's left me. I don't know what to do. I don't know. How can there, how can, uh, blah, blah, blah. I said, listen, it ain't all about that. I said, God loves you. He goes, what? And I love you. And I'm telling you, I went to God for you. He's like, what? 
what are you even talking? I expected you to have all this rage and come again. I, it goes, I, I don't have anybody. I said, come over here right now. So he comes over there. We end up embracing. He's crying and gives his life to the <laughs> If I could do the splits, I would right there. <laughs> that was God's plan. Yeah. Not me holding this grudge and never seeing God's plan and his way. Are y'all understanding that? Listen, I'm living in the double. I'm living in the double. Candy and I are living in the double. It doesn't matter what the devil comes. We know we're in covenant. We know we have access. Amen. We know our rights. Amen. And I'm going to give you one more and I'm done. I promise you. This is it. It's a real short one. Because there's so many. But this one's really cool. It's a Wednesday night. It was two days after that. It's a Wednesday night. And uh, I'm preaching that night at our church. And um, I get another phone call. And it, it's, uh, again, just numbers. And so now you know how to get a hold of me. <laughs> just get a phone. That, so anyway, I'm answering every one of these now from now on, you know. And he goes, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm nailing this guy when I'm doing this impression. I'm doing an impression. He goes, this is, what was his name? Bob Smith. It was real plain. This is Bob Smith. I go, why, Bob Smith, who, huh? who, why, who's Bob Smith? I don't know a Bob Smith. He said, well, you need to get to know me. I ain't even spit afterwards. <laughs> I'm trying to get ready for church. Why did I answer this one? And that morning, Candy got up on the, because we have three acres, beautiful park-like setting with the pond, and it's down, we sit on the hill and it's downhill, but my mower would only mow downhill. That's a problem. And when you're trying to preach not only around the world, but pastor a church, it takes a long time. By the time you get done finagling that thing up there, Candy said, enough's enough. She went to court that morning at 7 o'clock, put it on the refrigerator. I read it that morning, and she believed for a zero turn, top dollar, blah, 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 blah. Went to court about it, repented for anything we've ever said that neglected it or gave the enemy any access to stop it. Thank you for it. Now, we bind you, Satan is trying to keep it from us. Amen. Court dismissed. I read that on there. I agree with that. Praise God. Well, that was that night. This is two days later. Uh, you need to get to know me. Why? Because I'm sitting in your driveway. Good night. This gets worse. I'm thinking he's, he's on a wagon with a team of horses and a shotgun. <laughs> Why are you in my driveway? I have a delivery for you. What? Just get out here. I went out there, and he had this big old trailer, and on the back of it was the highest-priced bad boy. Listen, this thing had everything you can imagine, zero turn. As a matter of fact, there was a light beam going directly on it from heaven. <laughs> and I heard a heavenly choir. I said, you hear that? No. It, I said, whose is that? And he goes, it's yours. I said, what do you mean it's mine? He said, some old boy came in this morning, wrote a check for it. He said, I've never had that happen all the years of my life. He wrote a check for it, and he said, deliver it to this address. Still don't know who it was. Nobody even knew. Deliver it to this address. He said, it's yours. He said, that's the best money can buy right there. That's commercial. That's top. You, he looked at my lawn and said, it took me, we, and you never stopped mowing. You know what I'm talking about? When you were done, you kept mowing. He said, it'll take you less than an hour to mow this thing. And it'll mow it good, too. And he told me to put all the services, anytime you need anything, blades, anything, just bring it on in here. It'll be paid for. Everything's paid for. He goes, you know what? That old boy who did that, I believe the man upstairs will pay him tenfold or something. That's what he just said. I don't know why he said that. I said, Bob, he goes, because every time I give, I can't outgive him. He always gives me back, man. I'm telling you what. He said, but I never had anybody do this. I said, it's a spiritual law. I said, I believe he'll get a hundredfold return. 
He says, well, are you? I said, yeah. And then we started talking about spiritual laws. I said, Bob, let me, let me pay you for just delivering it. Can I pay you for delivering it? I was so excited to get on it. Just, <laughs> Man, it was a rodeo at first. I was bucked off a couple of times. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about now. If you've never been on it, guys, you know what I'm talking about? And you itch yourself that first time and take your hand off that one. <laughs> yeah. Son, get some extra points on that thing. <laughs> We're talking spiritual laws. I go, let me pay you. He goes, nah, next time you see me in a bar, just buy me a beer. <laughs> we were just talking spiritual laws. And <laughs> amen, amen. Aren't you glad what you know? Yeah. We get to go to court. Yeah. It's legal. God says, dial it in, man. Don't just know about this. Know about there's a covenant. And I have access to this, but I need you to access. Empower me. God is saying, empower me to empower you. Empower me to, to back my covenant with you. But it's not going to be done unless it's legal. It's not going to be done unless it's legal. Amen? And I'm so glad he's a legal God. And it doesn't matter how you feel or anything else. How long it's been, we can come to him right now. How many are eager to go to court right now? Hey, not, not only that, you can go to court for somebody else. Repent for them. Amen? And get access to what's yours. Praise God. Everybody stand up. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. This is a teaching day. Let's just lift up our hands. Thank you, Father. Let's just thank him for what he's given us today. Thank you for this word. Thank you for the truth, because the truth shall set you free. Lord, I believe we've heard the truth today. I've seen it in action. I've seen things speedily come to me, Lord, that I've not seen before. But now I know, I know I have understanding. Lord, you're a legal judge. You're a good judge. And you're saying, come to me. Let me justify you. Bring to me. Put me in remembrance. Yes, that's what we do right now. So if there's anything you need to take care of in that way, just get it taken care of so you can get access to him. If there's somebody, a neighbor or something, or a loved one who's done you wrong or, or whatever it might be, just, just clear that thing up right quick. And then get rid of that pride. Clothe yourself with humility. Lord, it's your way. I believe you and I believe your word. And I believe no matter what. And I glorify you and I thank you. And any words I've ever said, anything I ever thought or said that did not glorify you, I repent of that in Jesus' name. Because we don't have to, we get to. Amen, amen.